Welcome to the last session in Tupod Networks, which is the ninth section from the first model, where we discussed electrical circuits all along. Now we are concluding not just this session, but also this section and also this module. So from the next module onwards, in the next section, we'll be discussing some components of some other aspects of fundamentals of electrical engineering. So let's hope that all these sessions in the uh, in the um, in this um, module, in not only in this uh, in this section, but also in this module are um, attracted to you, useful to you, and you'll be using them in the coming examinations. Okay, mostly useful for competitive examinations. I've tried to tell you the speedier way of doing things. Okay, so in this problem also, in this uh, session also, we'll be following the same line of thought. Okay, and hence in this uh, session, I have clubbed together the miscellaneous problems that can be associated with two poor networks. So let, just let us have the, a look at the first um, problem given wherein it's very clear that there is a there are two ports vi is the uh, voltage um, given at the first port and perhaps we are looking out for the voltage v0 or vo or output voltage uh, which is uh, available across a resistor and the capacitor combination and the resistor is called as rl as a load resistance okay this is normally the output circuit of any uh, dc dc converter etc Okay, so what is asked is, of course, the transfer function, okay, so we have been looking at, we have had a brief glimpse at Laplace transforms, and Laplace transforms offers this wonderful concept of representing a system using a transfer function. And here what is asked is, the transfer function of the following network is VOS by VIS, output by input, where initial conditions are set as equal to 0, as equal to 1 by 2 plus SCR, okay. And what is asked is the value of the load resistance R less what. So we are we are already given the transfer function, okay. And now we are asked the value of R, okay. The first, the easiest method I would suggest to you would be to put S as equal to zero because a transfer function is what is going to happen for steady state. What do you mean by steady state? Nothing changes or S becomes equal to zero. So it becomes the same as equal to VOS by VIS, the same as equal to one by two, which means that half the voltage is available across R, okay, because C of course has become an open circuit. Why? Because 1 by Cs means S is equal to 0 or it has become an open circuit. So the available voltage is now, if, of course this is what, is what happens in steady state as we have been discussing in transient state. So, so resistor R should be the same as equal to R such that uh, as a potential divider the voltage is available. That is whatever is impressed on the port 1 becomes half of it is available across the second port. Okay. So the same thing can be done using uh, the development of transfer functions as uh, impedance uh, output impedance divided by input impedance, which is the same as equal to R into 1 by SC divided by R plus 1 by SC. Okay, and then add R to it. So you see that you uh, and then you can see that if you want to have um, uh, if you okay, of course you can spread it out, then you can see that to have half the voltage available, you have to have that R R is equal to R. Okay, so that is also uh, detailed and given here. But what I would recommend is that uh, to use the concept that at, at, uh, if you want to have half the voltage, then at steady state, then it put S is equal to zero. So immediately the capacitor, of course, at steady state, the capacitor opens out as it is. So the resistor has to be half. R has to be, R has to be the same value as R or the total resistance, uh, the half of the impedance has to be available across the output. Okay. So that's it. So let's move to the second problem. Again, different kinds of problem, different kinds of problems. Okay. Again, it's a two-port network, no doubt about it, because we have shown V1 and V2 and I1 and D2 as before. And there's an impedance parameter kind of thing shown in the box. And it, the, uh, the circuit is energized with a 120 volt source. Uh, uh, through which current uh, and uh, which um, which uh, puts in a, which actually introduces injects a current I1 and it flows through 10 ohms. Okay, on the output side we are having ZL. Okay, of course this is the terminating impedance and through it uh, through which I2 flows. So it, uh, definitely I2 ZL or minus I2 ZL is equal to V2. Okay, so as before, this is something like revolution. And what is asked is in the circuit, uh, in the given circuit, the two port network has the impedance matrix Z is equal to 40, 60. 60, 120 or Z11 is equal to 40, Z12 is equal to 60, 
which is also equal to z21 and we are having z22 is equal to 120. The value of z for which maximum power is transferred to the load. Okay, so we need to have uh, R in equal to whatever okay, equal to the impedance on this side. Okay, so what do we so R in other words we need to find out RTS. Okay, so RTS should be equal to uh, the impedance and uh, the output so in that sense that we can have the maximum power transfer. Okay, so we are supposed to find out RTS. How can you find out RTS? Okay, so first and foremost, what is inside the circuit needs to be diagnosed. Okay, what is inside there? We are having we can interpret as a T network. That is why we learned uh, the, this kind of interpretation. So, what is a uh, what, uh, what is uh, Z11? It's the same as equal to Z A plus uh, Z C. We have I have shown a diagram there where Z A plus Z C is equal to forty, and Z C is equal to sixty. Okay, so what is Z A? Z A is the same as equal to minus twenty. So we are getting the concept of a negative resistance here just because we are going to use this in this manner. Okay, there's no, no harm at all. Okay, because it is just a representation. It's not the actual scheme of things. So Z C is equal to sixty, and uh, so in that case. Zc plus Zb is equal to Z22, so Zb is equal to 60. Okay, so now we are having a system wherein a 10 ohm at the beginning is connected to minus 20 ohms, and then we are having this particular circuit. Okay, and how do you find out Zth? You look at the circuit from the uh, from to uh, uh, port two after short circuiting the uh, the uh, after killing the sources. In this case, the voltage source is short. Okay. So what do we see there? We see that uh, we we see that um, uh, yeah 60. That is Zc is in parallel with 10 uh, minus 20 or minus 10. So 60 into minus 10 divided by 60 minus 10. This is going to be the parallel combination. This has to be added to 60. Can we see this? Okay. So we see that this is the same as equal to 48. Okay. So it's a it's 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 a very interesting application of two port networks wherein you are just representing whatever is in the black box called as Z of which certain ideas are given to you as a T-network. Okay? And you see that one of the resistances happen to be negative. It doesn't matter because no negative resistances are available. There won't be any. But at the same time, this is just a representation and it can be made useful. I hope this problem in its very interesting aura is clear to you. Uh, moving on to the third problem. Okay, here we are shown, uh, it's very clear that it's a pole zero diagram because there's a real axis and an imaginary axis. On, and it's uh, and it's shown as an explain and uh, the 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 zero is given uh, as minus three and of course there's a pole pair conjugate pairs okay, and they happen to be at uh, minus one plus j one and minus one minus j one okay so this is this uh, this is the arrangement of the uh, of the components of the circuit okay and how, and what is asked is the driving point impedance okay so driving po point impedance is what is given in the form of a uh, pole zero diagram okay z s of a network has the pole zero locations as shown in the figure okay if z zero is equal to three okay so z zero is given as equal to three then what is z s is what is asked okay so what do you do you actually put in everything together so you are having uh, so you see that you are having uh, there is a zero so s plus three comes up on the numerator and then you are having two um, uh, two um, uh, 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 then you are having two um, poles so put them together so it's going to be s mi minus minus one or s plus one plus j one and minus j one so you are together they will form okay you put them together so x plus one whole square plus one okay and then z zero is equal to three so put s is equal to zero in this case so what we see what we, what we have here we we see that this is going to be uh, three by two okay so three by two to become okay, uh, to, uh, to become uh, three at s is equal to zero you have to have a multiple by two okay so so z s is equal to two into s plus three divided by s plus one whole square plus one okay i repeat here we are given the pole zero diagrams of a transfer function z s okay and we are given the additional information that z at s is equal to zero is equal to three so use you, you use them both first of course you use the diagram how do you use the diagram you set up the poles um, you set up the zeros on the numerator and the poles on the denominator so s minus minus three so s plus three figures con uh, figures on the numerator when what about the denominator it will have s minus p1 and multiplied by s minus p2 so what is p1 p1 is minus one plus j1 so we have uh, so that's one of it the other is uh, what is p2 p2 is minus one minus j1 so together when you multiply them together it becomes s plus one whole square plus one okay so this is not enough because z0 will give us only three by two right now when you set s is equal to zero numerator has only three and denominator has uh, one as also one one plus one two okay so three by two is not what we want at z0 so how do, how do you overcome that right simply multiplication by two and that gives us what is called as z0 okay 
So once that is done, let's move to the fourth problem. What does the fourth problem tell us? It tells us about a network. Okay, consider the building block called network. This is what we have been talking about so, so often. That is, they are all building blocks. Okay, so the building block called network M shown in the figure. Let C is equal to 100 microfarad and R is equal to 10 kilo ohms. Okay, so we are having an RC network with V I on one side and V two S on the other side, and they are connected in cascade, just as we uh, saw earlier. If you put them together, okay, when you are having a cascaded network, it's all it's simple to it's uh, we, it's you are going to have a multiplication of matrices, or you are going to have Z1 as multiplied by Z1 as again. So it's going to be the square, the square of whatever you get as Z1s. So let's find out Z1s. How do you do that? We just saw that it's the same as equal to R. Okay, so we are having uh, yeah, we, we are having R on the numerator, and then you are going to have R plus one by C S on the denominator. So put them together. So you have R C S divided by one plus R C S. Okay, and R C is the same as equal to hundred into ten raised hundred uh, into ten raised to minus six multiplied by ten into ten raised to three. So that's equal to one. Okay, so one. S divided by 1 plus S. Okay, so when you have having two networks in cascade, one uh, you, are, you are having yeah you, you are having S by 1 plus S whole square. So S square and 1 plus S whole square. Okay, so that that gives rise to uh, C as the answer. Okay, very simple. Okay, just the uh, just uh, the fact that uh, you are having a cascade arrangement. Okay, and it's a two-port network, no doubt about it. Okay, so moving on to the fifth problem, what we see here, we see Z A and Z C. Okay, connected together. And we are having, um, yeah, and we are, okay, so of course, uh, the, the, what was given in English, I've explained in a diagram. So let's go to the, let's uh, go to the question first, okay. In a linear two-port network, when 10 volt is applied to port 1, that's the reason why in red I mark 10, okay. A current of 4 amps flows, okay, uh, through port 2 when it is short-circuited. So what we have, we have some impedance in between, okay, and that can be calculated by 10 by Four amps that is equal to ZA, and that's that is what is called as that is what I have named as equal to ZA. That is 10 by 4 is equal to 2.5. Why? Because ZC is a short circuit. Okay, now what is next is that when 5 volt is applied, given in black uh, uh, to port 1, a current of 1.25 amps flows okay through a 1 ohm resistor. So, a 1 ohm resistor is shown through which 1.25 uh, so through which 1.25 amps flows okay is connected across port 2. Another th the third case is if given in blue when 3 volt is applied to port 1, then current in amperes through a 2 ohm resistance connected across port 2. Okay, so after 1 ohm, we come to 2 ohms. Okay, uh, is what? Okay, so what is the current that which flows through the 2 ohm resistor is what is asked. Okay, so let's let's start off from where we should. That is, we start off from with the red diagram at the red uh, quantity. That is, when we apply 10 volt, we get um, uh, we get uh, uh, 4 amps. So Z is equal to 2.5. Okay, next we connect when when voltage across 2.5 is equal to uh, okay, so we see that we are having 1.25 amps flowing through 1 ohm. Okay, so Z is now for the, for the time being 1 ohm. So we are having 1.25 volts there. So what's the voltage across Z? It's the same as equal to we have applied 5. So 5 minus 1.25 is the, the same as equal to 3.75 volt. Okay, Z, okay, so since voltage across 2.5 ohms is going to be 5 minus whatever is available across. The one ohm resistor, which is actually parallel to ZC, okay, because ZC is now uh, one ohm is now parallel to ZC. So we see that we see that that 1.25 volt is available also across ZC, but then of course because one uh, because 1.25 amps flows through one ohms, that is through the 1.25 volts. Okay, so 1.25 volts, uh, if you deduct from uh, if you remove from five volts, then 3.75 volts is the voltage available across the uh, the the C the series impedance, which is ZA. Okay. So if you divide by ZA, which is equal to 2.5, you get the current flowing through ZA as equal to 1.5 amps. Okay, so 1.2 of 1.5, 1.25 flows through the 1 ohm. So the rest flows through ZC. Okay, so what is that amount? That's equal to 0.5. Uh, that's equal to 1.5 minus 1.25, which is equal to 0.25 amps. Okay, and the voltage across it is equal to 1.25 volt. That doesn't change because the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage across ZC. Okay. So we are seeing that 1.25, the voltage across ZC divided by the current through ZC, which is equal to 0.25, gives us the value of ZC as equal to 5. Okay? So using two steps or two uh, in experiments, we have solved for ZA. 
okay we have got a, we have given a picture to z as as having 2.5 ohms we have connected one after another several first we had a short circuit then we had one ohm and now we are going to connect something else and so based on that we also De uh, deciphered what is going to be the shunt element which is zc and we saw that it's equal to 5 ohms okay? so now we move to the third aspect of the, the the third part of the experiment wherein we connect two ohms okay when you're connecting two ohms to five in parallel to five ohms the total is going to be two into five by uh, uh, two into five divided by two plus five that's equal to ten by seven okay and then what happens is that we are having a voltage distribution of the applied voltage what is applied three volt is applied it's going to be distributed between the parallel assembly of 2 ohms to 5 ohms and um, uh, and the, the series element which is which is 2.5 okay so what is it it's going to be the same as equal to 3 into 10 by 7 which is the output impedance right now of zc parallel um, uh, or 5 parallel um, uh, 5, 5 parallel 2 ohms okay divided by 5 parallel 2 or 10 by 7 uh, plus 2.5 which is the series element okay so we see that there is a voltage uh, divider uh, and give, that gives uh, a division of voltage of 30 by 27.5 across the uh, newly added uh, shunt element of 2 ohms okay and that's that's applicable across zc as well okay so now simply what we do what do we need to do we just need to uh, divide by 2 ohms to get the current through it so it is going to be 30 divided by 27.5 divided by 2 of that 30 divided by 55 which is equal to 0 0.545 okay so uh, after two steps we do some measurements etc that is exactly what we do when we were uh, trying to understand two port network and therefore you come to a solution for the third aspect okay? this is the way that superposition is also applicable okay moving on to the sixth problem where we are given a network okay and we are having uh, four ohms two ohms and uh, two ohms forming a star and at, at the top we also have a delta four ohm two ohm and two ohm okay and what is asked is for the given two port network the value of transfer impedance z21 so what we require is just the uh, just a star or a t network and the central leg okay so how do you do that the delta at the top can be deciphered what should be deciphered should be decided based on what should be what should be resolved should be decided based on what we need to find out we need to find out the central element so what we do is that the 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 pi the pi or the delta at the top is resolved into the star element especially only the leg portion so we are having uh, 4 into 2 divided by 4 plus 2 plus 2 or you get 1 ohm okay so this 1 ohm and 2 ohm together will give you the uh, the transfer impedance or the central leg quantity okay so that's all that's there in this it's a very simple problem so we move to the last slide okay in this last session in this last section in this first module okay so what is asked is the short circuit admittance a matrix of a two port network is given by 0 minus 1 minus half half 0 okay immediately it's not a reciprocal circuit because the z12 because z12 is not equal to z okay or y12 is not equal to y21 okay admission matrix is what is given the two port network is non reciprocal and passive it is non reciprocal okay but it's not passive it is it is active that's the reason why it is non reciprocal that is a, a reciprocity is not there okay so answer b is right okay moving on to the last of the lot the driving point impedance of the circuit shown below okay so we are having one henry one farad one henry one farad forming a ladder network and so from looking from the uh, looking from the input side you are you are supposed to find out the driving point impedance several options are given okay so i'll just suggest two rules okay that that you can use directly with, for, for selecting one of the options one is of course the fact that between the numerator and the denominator there is only one power um, one power of s should be uh, should there should be a difference only of one uh, of an index of one only why because otherwise it's not implementable you can i uh, implement phi s or s a s or b s because it's an inductor you can also implement phi by s of one by s uh, c s etc because uh, that will represent the capacitor you can't represent in uh, you can't uh, you can't implement s square or one by s square okay with coefficients etc so obviously from the, the transfer function is talking about a a real system a real system can be implemented only if there is a uh, the, uh, there's an index difference of only one or power difference of only one with respect to the, uh, the maximum power of s okay so we see that we are having uh, a is okay because we are having s4 as the largest uh, s raised to 4 and s cube uh, uh, when you compare there's only one difference okay and then uh, but of course c is not acceptable as also b is not acceptable because the power difference is 2 okay 
and uh, yeah of course d is also okay okay so that so that completes the first uh, first concept second concept is concept is that when you're going to see zs we realize that the parallel the front elements are going to be parallel and then you're going to add it to s okay you're going to add it to s because one henry means s okay what what happens the numerator gets an additional quantity because s plus something Okay, with the denominator will will entail that the numerator is going to get an additional power. Okay, so whichever quantity has a larger power by one, of course, uh, for the uh, for the numerator is going to be the most appropriate transfer function. You can of course do it, but in this case, this is enough. Okay, two rules alone need to be taken into consideration. One is that the power difference between the largest power of S should be only one between the numerator and the denominator. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, and second is for realization, for implementation. Okay, second is of course when you are adding a series, uh, in a series inductor. You when you are adding an inductor in series, then the power, uh, the power increase by one is going to be for the for the numerator. On the other hand, if it's going to be one by S or K by S or a capacitor that you're going to add, then it will have the, it will appear on the denominator. I suppose this is clear, and that's all that's there in this. Okay? We have discussed mostly transfer functions because transfer function is the essential is the is is the is the crucial element when you are when you are having two ports. It is actually what is transferring anything from the first port to the second port. So that's the reason why we have looked at mostly transfer. Uh, transfer functions and uh, an important property of transfer function was talked about here. It uh, uh, here the context that we uh, the, the 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 power difference between the largest power of S uh, between numerator and the denominator should be one, and how you can have a larger power on the numerator or the denominator can be decided. Okay? Second aspect that was discussed was that another utilization of two-port network wherein you do experimentally certain things and you, of course you are giving a shape to the network in the sense that there is, an Z, there is a series element, there is a shunt element and to which you either add a short circuit or a uh, or uh, one ohm, and thereafter you add a two ohm, and then you can find out the result. Okay, so all these, uh, uh, so whatever is available to you, you can add, and you can find out. And what is not available to you, you can compute. This is the idea behind the, the behind that particular problem. Okay, and then transfer is always brought in by the uh, by the central element. Okay, it could be uh, it could be the admitters the the capping element in the uh, admitters network, or it could be the uh, shunting element in the uh, in the. Uh, the T network. Okay, uh, we also talked about pole zero configurations again expressing the transfer function, and then we also talked about uh, cascaded transfer functions being multiplied together. Okay, and of course uh, we also uh, talked about a very interesting situation wherein uh, when you we, when you gave the shape of a T network for uh, whatever was given as Z parameters, you even end up with negative resistances. Okay, and that negative resistance can be utilized as we do for uh, positive resistances, even for Paralleling of uh, so paralleling of resistance, etc. Though in reality, a negative resistance never exists. Okay? We also looked at a case wherein, uh, wherein a transfer function was given such that output and input uh, were uh, were of equal ratio, which means that the resistance has also needs to be of equal ratio or of equal values. Otherwise, what, what is because the capacitor is going to open up soon enough. Okay? And that's the reason why we set S as equal to zero because that gives us an open circuit, open circuit in uh, capacitor. Okay, suppose. Uh, uh, the very interesting problems in this session are uh, really uh, thrilling for you also and uh, the challenge is uh, really accepted and the entire first module is uh, comes very easily to you and you will do very well in the git examination. Thank you.